Welcome back, CA football fans. He's Tim McDonald. I'm Bobby Broyles as we continue our 12 teams and 12 day series with the Rams of Rhode Island. Tough first season for new head coach Jim Fleming as Rhodey finished 1-11, but growing pains are expected when you bring in a new head coach. The Rams were able to gain some momentum heading into the offseason, though, Tim, picking up that win over Towson in their season finale. Yeah, I think we both can agree, Coach Fleming. Jim Fleming is the guy for Rhode Island. I think mm -hmm. he's in it for the long haul. Should see some improvements under Rhode Island this year. You know, you hang your hat on... You, progression is such a big theme with these early teams and the 12 teams and 12 days series, Bob, because it's true. You know, as corny as it sounds, Coach Fleming and Rhode Island, they're still building. You know, these players are still learning the offense. They're still learning the defense. You have to hang your hat on that big win over Towson at the end of the season, give the players something to celebrate. Again, Rhodey this year brings back, the good news is you bring back eight starters on both sides of the ball. Defense and special teams is probably going to be a little bit of a bright spot this year. You look at Miles Holmes. He's a guy who earned respect enough throughout the league to earn preseason all to return specialist honors coming into this year. He had over 700 return yards, and he's also a DB with some experience, which helps. Mm -hmm. Of course, you lose Andrew Bowes, who was an all-CA linebacker, but you bring back Tim Wineclaw, a guy who on defense you, you think can get some things going. You bring back Adam Parker, also another linebacker who can fill some holes. But again, with this Rhode Island team, it's going to be a slow progression, Bob, but you'd like to think with Jim Fleming, they have the, uh, the foundation that they're looking for. Absolutely. During media day, we caught up with Coach Fleming about entering his second season as a leader of the Rams. I think second season, no matter how many starters you got coming back, is a big deal. You know, the first year in, you know, I've been in situations where you've been able to wave the magic wand and make things happen right away. You know, a lot of that has to do with early success. You know, our group, as we went through the whole struggles of last year, we're able to maintain with persistent attitude, continue to go to work every day, and we're able to come up with the last win of the season, which, as I've told many people, if you're ever going to go 1-11, that's the only way to do it. You know, I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't want to do it again, I promise you. But I, I think that second year in, you got uh, – had a couple of recruiting classes in. I think we've been able to help ourselves with talent. We've been able to develop the kids that have been in the program. And there's a very clear cut uh, understanding of the expectations we have and the standards we set as a coaching staff. And when the kids start to embrace that and start to be able to you know, speak like coaches to one another, then you've got an opportunity to go and make some moves. And I think that's where we're at as a football team. The big struggle last year for this team notably was the offense, Tim, as that unit at times struggled to generate points, averaging only 12 and a half points per game. What improvements are you expecting this season from the offensive side of the ball? Well, I don't think it's going to be anything too drastic. You know, we're not going to come out and see this team light up the scoreboard right away. But I think, you know, again, like we say, there is still progression. You look back at some of the key spots and some of the key guys that are returning. Literally, the, the, the entire offensive line returns. You see four starters coming back. Harold Cooper is a guy who, as a true freshman last year, had 90 carries. And a guy who they looked at at times to carry the load at the running back position. You look at the wide receiver position, they bring back two guys who played in all 12 games last year. Mm -hmm. Again, the question might be at QB this year. James Caparell is a guy last year who really came on at the end of the season, kind of forced into a start. He had three rushing touchdowns, three passing, but he did throw nine picks. So again, with this Rhode Island team, the only way you can go is up. Only scored 21 touchdowns last year, Bob, and only had two field goals. So the only progression that you can have is going up. Mm -hmm. I also look at the guy to be another big piece on this offense is Charlie McKeeman, a freshman tight end last year who had three touchdowns and 28 catches. The only Ram last year to have a catch in every game. Offensively, Rhode Island needs to score more points, and I think that's the only way you can go up right now. As Coach Fleming explains, it could be a unique quarterback battle heading into training camp. It'll be different again. Yeah, I mean, we had some injuries last year, as you pointed to. It wasn't just quarterback, it was running back. There was a number of different things that so you kind of looked up at the football gods and try to figure out what's going on. But uh, we've got uh, probably a very competitive three way race to see, you know, who's going to be in the top two. Uh, we've got a kid named Paul Miraz, who is a JC transfer quarterback, got two years left. Uh, Brockton, Massachusetts native, uh, got uh, Jimmy Caparell, who is a player that started six games for us last year, you know, and we've got who will be a sophomore. And then we've got another freshman named Jordan Vizzano, who uh, came in mid-year last year, uh, able to get through spring practice and showed us some things. And then we've got a couple other quarterbacks that we brought in the recruiting classes. So we're, we got our work cut out for us. We've got to be able to get into training camp. We've got to be able to evaluate and determine which way we're going with the quarterback position. 
That should be an entertaining battle, and we'll both be very intrigued to see who comes out of that as the starter going into week one. But peeking ahead into the schedule for the Rams this year, they'll be on television quite a bit, three of their first four contests, starting with the opener at Syracuse on ESPN3. Rhodey then hits the road for a trip to UAlbany on September the 12th for the conference opener on ASN and treks up to Orno for a date with Maine at the end of the month, also on the American Sports Network. Yeah, showing some love for Rhodey early in the TV games. And, you know, I applaud Rhodey for this tough schedule. You look at the, like you said, four of the first five games are away from home. You look at that first game versus Cuse, and remember a couple of years back, Rhodey played very well at Cuse. They did. A familiar foe in some sense. And then you also, I have to give credit to Rhodey for scheduling a game versus Harvard. That's their first home game. That's still a very tough home game. That's Harvard team out of the Ivy League that has been an FCS power in recent years. Of course, the October 3rd game versus Brown, you know, not only for interstate bragging rights, but it's also the 100th meeting of that rivalry. A lot of pride, a lot of guys on both rosters from that state. <laughs> but again, if you're Rhodey, you have to take safe football games with a grain of salt. Uh, the good news is you get Delaware at home, Richmond at home, Nova at home, and Stony Brook at home, and that's mm-hmm. all in CAA football play. So again, I think this is a tough schedule for Rhodey, but sometimes the tough schedules are the ones that show what kind of team you have. Indeed. As mentioned, the Rams opened their 2015 season on the road at ACC foe Syracuse on Friday, September the 4th at 7 p.m. on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Head over now to CAA Football's Everyday is Saturday blog, cafootball.wordpress.com, for a one-on-one interview feature with Rhodey Safety Tim Weinclaw. Tim and I will be back at it tomorrow at 11 a.m. previewing the UAlbany Great Danes who look to build off a successful first year under coach Greg Catuso. We'll see you tomorrow.